Hello. on God's word and to see how it, there we go, to see how it affects your life in those amazing ways. Today we also get to witness the, the great miracle and sacrament of baptism, which is going to be absolutely awesome. So as we begin, we begin in the name of our great God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's good to be here this morning. Let's sing about it. It's good. Jesus has promised to always be with us, yet we have often failed to recognize his presence because of our sin. So let us take a moment and confess our sins to our loving Father. God of mercy, we have sinned against you and against one another. We have failed to love others as Jesus loves us. We have lived in darkness as though your goodness and mercy were not with us. We have failed to trust your promises. Forgive us, Father, for the sake of your Son. Remind us of your daily presence, that we may walk with you all our days. Amen. God promises that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We are citizens of heaven because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And it is my joy to declare to you that all your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Mark, the ninth chapter, Jesus gives his closest followers a glimpse of his glory as he is transfigured before them. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them, his clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them. And a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. 
this time we invite uh, Destiny and Ryan and baby Kaysen to come forward. Uh, before we begin, this is plain tap water, heated up in the microwave as to not startle the poor child. And as we pour out this water, as you hear this, uh, hear the words of Joel also from the Old Testament. The Lord says, on that day, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And that's exactly what God does in baptism. He pours out his grace on us. He's going to pour out his grace on baby Kaysen. He's going to be transfigured today from just a child to God's child, part of God's family. And so it's so amazing that he would have his parents, the people who are going to love him most and show him Jesus the most, to be here with him and to support him in this time. So it is, it's your intent to baptize Kaysen and say yes. Perfect. Kaysen, make the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one that Christ has redeemed. So as parents, you know that Kaysen cannot drive yet. He can't even speak. He can't do a lot of things. He's going to be reliant on you for so much. So I ask you, is it your intent to raise Kaysen in the faith, to bring him to church, to surround him with people who will pray for him and love him and say yes with the help of God? As a congregation, it is your duty as God's people, this communion of saints to surround not only Kaysen, but Destiny and Ryan as well, as they pledge to raise their child in the faith. So I ask you, is it your intent to keep them in your prayers, to love him, to correct him when you see him doing things that he shouldn't on church, on the church property? Then say, yes, with the help of God. Yes. Since Kaysen cannot answer to himself, I invite you all to, to answer what he believes for him and what he's going to be raised in by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You guys have already learned the trick to get him quiet. It took me like a year and a half to learn. Kaysen, I'll take this. Oh, he is so tiny. Hi. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Kaysen James Arthur, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's welcome Kaysen James to the family of God. Let's pray. Lord God, I have no idea what plans you have for Kaysen. I don't know what he will do with his life, what job he will take on, but I do know one thing that you will be there every step of the way, that you love him dearly, and you call him your little lamb. I ask you to be with his parents and all of us as we strive to show him the love of Jesus all the days of his life. Amen. Congratulations, guys. This right here is a candle that we often give to remind you have the light that dwells within Kaysen because of baptism. It's the light of Christ. I always encourage parents every baptismal birthday, so February 14th every year, to light this candle, get out a little cake, and celebrate his birthday. Do you agree to do that? And you can invite me over for the cake. Awesome. There you are. Welcome again to Kaysen, to God's family.
At this time, we continue with our children's message from Miss Sherry. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, there's clapping for that too. <laughs> people do all kinds of things to celebrate Valentine's Day. Some people wear red and pink, red or pink, to celebrate Valentine's Day. Many people show their love by giving lots of different things, right? I've got a few of those things here with me. Let's see. People share their love for the people they love by giving Valentine's balloons. We need one of these. By giving lovely flowers. People share love, especially with candy. You can't go wrong with candy, can you? And how many of you have either given a card or gotten a card so far or going to do that today? Yeah, cards are big aren't they? For showing love to the people we love with a message of love. So I have some Valentine cards that I brought. Let's see what the message is of love. Now we got the homemade Valentine's cards. You can't beat those. And then let's see, this one says, you have a piece pizza, my heart, with pizza on the front. And then it's a cheesy message inside. <laughs> so I won't read that one. And then this one says, Valentine's Day is a good time for thinking about the sweet things in life. So naturally I thought about you. Happy Valentine's Day. And then we have this message, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Wait, we just heard that. We heard that in the reading from our scripture today. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's a Valentine's message I have not seen before in a card like this. But it's a message of love. David in the psalm is saying that God's love is going to follow him only on Valentine's Day. No, all the days of his life every day. In fact, scripture is just like a bunch of Valentine's cards, messages of love. Let's see what some of those messages would be. God is love. Yeah. Another one, love each other. God's word tells us this, remain in my love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son for us and love is patient we could go on and on with scripture messages of love this God is my son who i love listen to him wait that's another one of course that's a really important one and the message came from god and it was to his son Jesus when they were up on this mountaintop, he and his three best disciples, his three good disciples, no, three disciples were up there with him on the mountain and they got to hear this voice. They didn't see anything, they heard the voice. A message of love from God the Father to his son Jesus, telling him he loves them. He heard it, the disciples heard it, what an amazing message of love. And the message of love is for us. God sent his son Jesus, who he loved that much, to live as a man, to die and to rise again, because he loves us. That message of love is for us every day. And today, Kason got to come a part of God's family along with us. So we a God for that. Ready? For Kason becoming a part of God's family, a beloved child of God. Yay, Yay God. God. Happy Valentine's Day. You are a beloved child of God.
If you turn to page 10 in the back of your bulletin, you'll see Psalm 23. We're wrapping that up today. I invite you to join with me in reading this psalm. I invite you as well to memorize this great psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I have a gift, though I will admit Sharon would probably call it a curse. I didn't know I had this gift until we had been married a few years. Uh, we would go shopping in a mall. How many of you remember shopping in a mall? <laughs> yeah, we would go shopping in a mall, and, and that's typically when this gift would, would pop up. We, and we, we have learned that because we love each other, sometimes we shop together and sometimes we shop apart. Uh, Sharon likes to shop for clothes. I like to shop for books. Sharon likes to shop for clothes for the grandkids. I like to stuff my face at the food court. And so sometimes we go separate ways, and that's when this gift is revealed. It, it comes at the very end of the time because we'll say, hey, I'll meet you in an hour kind of over there, and that's when this gift happens because I'll go to that general area, and I'll look that way. I won't see her. I'll look that way. And I won't see her. And you're probably thinking, well, did you look behind you? I did. I didn't see her there either. And then she'll come up to me and she goes, didn't you see me? I was standing right there in front of you. And the answer is no, because I have this gift or curse or skill. Sometimes people have this gift or really at this point a curse that they don't see God at work, that they miss his presence in life right now. They, they see him working in the past. They believe that one day he'll work powerfully in the future, but, but they miss it right now. And that's what makes verse 6 so such a great verse. If that's happening to you today, or if that happens one day, remember this verse, verse 6. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because think about this. It, if I don't recognize or if I don't believe that God is present with me in life right now I lose my solid foundation 
I live in uncertainty. And yet, if like David, I recognize that God's presence is with me and he brings love and goodness with that presence all the days of my life, I have certainty. I have a solid faith foundation. I have an assurance that God is at work and that he will always be with me. And David describes that work with words like love and goodness. And so this morning, we're going to walk through those three phrases in this last verse that talk about the solid assurance that that you and I can have, whether we're here or whether we're online, that God is speaking to us and that God is with us because Jesus, we discover in the Bible, is this shepherd. He is our good shepherd, and he gives us assurance of his goodness and love. This morning, because it's also kind of Transfiguration Sunday, that was the gospel reading that was read earlier, we'll look at some of those verses out of that story because it too reveals God's presence with with his disciples. And yes, they were his three favorite disciples, Peter, James, and John. And in that gift he gives them is a gift that he gives us, that we can be certain no matter what happens in life, that God is with us. Let's start with the first assurance. When Jesus is your good shepherd, love and goodness is guaranteed. Maybe you thought only death and taxes are guaranteed, but love and goodness is guaranteed. David starts off, surely goodness and love will follow me. Surely goodness and love. No, so he doesn't say like, maybe goodness and love or or sometimes goodness and love, or possibly goodness and love, or hopefully goodness and love. He says, surely goodness and love. David is certain about God's love and goodness at work in his life, and he invites us to have that assurance as well that that God is at work, that God is present. Now, is that to say that, that everything that happened in David's life was good? No, read the rest of David's life. There's a lot of bad stuff that goes on. You can read the Psalms and he just pours his heart out to God about all the things that are going wrong in his life. But he also recognizes this truth. That instead of worrying, he's going to worship. Instead of fixating on the question of what went wrong, he will focus on the answer of how God makes things right. Surely, goodness and love. Now, how can he do that? Is is it that he has a super faith? Not really. But he has faith in God. His faith is not in what David can do or how strong David can believe. His faith is in who God is, God's character, goodness, and love. When you read through the Bible, you, you find about how good this God is. In the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth, and it just goes day after day. He creates the sky. He creates the sea, and it was good. He creates plants and animals. It was good. He creates man and woman, and it was good. Now, it also refers to God's moral goodness, and again, sometimes life is not good, but God is always, always, always working good. And then comes that word, love. You may have learned it in the, I think it's King James Version, goes love or goodness and mercy. That word for love, kesed, it is in Hebrew. It can mean mercy. It can mean steadfast love. It can mean sacrificial love. It, it covers the whole gamut. Valentine's love, we kind of limit to like cards, chocolate, which is the candy you should give at Valentine's Day, by the way, and flowers. But you really should just give the chocolate. But this kind of love, this kind of love is filled with mercy. It's filled with grace. That's probably the word we would use in the New Testament for it. It's filled of a commitment, of an assurance that God will sacrifice his own son's life for you and for me. That God's love and goodness involves him coming down to 
you and to me that, that we might have life. And at one point in Jesus' life story comes what we call the transfiguration story. And Jesus shows who he is to three of his disciples. Mark describes it this way in Mark 9, 2. Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. Transfigured. That is, Jesus kind of pulls the, the human veil back and shows his disciples his glory. It was there all the time. It was working the miracles. It was giving the powerful teaching. It was God's presence with them. But on that Mount of Transfiguration, it's kind of like the veil is pulled back and, and the brightness of that glory shines through. And then Moses and Elijah show up as well. And they're reminded that this is no ordinary man among them but that God's own son is with them. That the same guy who was with them the day before is the same guy who has revealed all that to them. It's the same God who, in case of met in the waters of baptism, it's the same God who meets us in the Lord's Supper. It's the same God who loves you and me. And surely, his goodness and love is, is guaranteed for you. Surely, his goodness and love is is there for you. You have that certainty. You have that assurance. And here's a, a second assurance. Surely his goodness and love pursues you every day. I, I met Sharon at a bowling tournament. I had actually fixed her up with this other guy, and he didn't show up, and I did, and history was changed after that point. Uh, after that event, I... Uh, I decided I wanted to go out on a date with her. So I, I called her up on the phone, and this isn't when there was things called landlines and there were push dials on the phone. You put, punch the number in, and it turns out you could punch the number so fast that you would automatically get a busy signal. I know this because I called her five times, or I dialed it five times. I'm And why did I dial it so fast? Because I was nervous, but somehow I get faster when I'm nervous. And so I kept, and I, after about the fourth time, I was about to give up. After about the fifth time, I go, th this person seems really special. And so I just kept punching until the, the, the numbers went through. I'm glad I did. My, my life was changed at that point. When David describes this God who loves us, this, this good shepherd, he says in verse 6 that he will follow me all the days of my life. Now, this is something I learned about Psalm 23 that I thought was really cool. You may or may not, but that word for follow, I, I kind of thought was, you know, just kind of tag along. He's there. I'm there. We're just kind of zipping through life. But, but that's not what it, it, it means. It means that, but it means more than that. It, it means to, like, literally, relentlessly pursue. You know, follow, you can kind of go weave in and out, and sometimes you're together and sometimes you're not. But, but relentlessly pursue. That God loves you and me so much that he will relentlessly pursue us. That he might be in a relationship with us. That describes how Jesus would leave his throne in heaven and, and come to a, a manger, a hay trough, and, and a barn or in a cave. How he would put up with 12 disciples who really don't come off that strong because they typically miss where he's at. And they don't always get his teaching, but he sticks with them. And that he would give his life up on a cross, that he would die the most brutalist of deaths, that, that you and I might have life with him, that, that Jesus never gives up because he relentlessly pursues you and me with this great love that he has for us. You want to know what love is on Valentine's Day? Look to Jesus and find the great love that he has. If you want to know his story, even better, use the Lenten devotional that's online or available in the back. Uh, spend this time uh, as we begin the season of Lent this Wednesday, reminding yourself, reminding myself of this great story of how great God's love is for us. And it's on that Mount of Transfiguration that his Father, God our Heavenly Father, doesn't want the disciples or us to miss the story. And so it says this in Mark 9, 7. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Listen to his goodness and love. Listen to his story. Live out his message. 
Because God pours out his goodness and love. God pours out his goodness and mercy that you and I might have life. Life with God and a life that we share with each other that, that is characterized by goodness and love. And just as he pursues you, he pursues everyone else around you. That they too might know who this great shepherd is. That they might experience his love. And then comes the third assurance. When Jesus is your good shepherd, surely his goodness and love will reveal his presence with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. David wraps it up this way with this phrase in Psalm 23, 6. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, David uses the word house. I, I think of the word home when he says that. House is kind of the place where you are. Home is the place where you want to live. Think of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz or uh, E.T., the extraterrestrial. Their, their goal was simply to get back home. They had, they had a longing to get back home. And for David, he describes that, that desire to, to, to be in God's presence, to live life, not, not just that day, not just that moment when he meet, needs them, but all of life in God's presence. Christians typically describe that as heaven, which is a place that we all hope to go to one day. But heaven is also God's presence with you right now. That's why Jesus often says in Matthew's gospel account that the kingdom of heaven is with you. That God's presence is with us now. And so the disciples are on the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, Peter, James, and John, and Peter just can't control himself because uh, Peter just believes if he has a thought, he should speak it out loud. And uh, he does that in this case. And he says, Lord, it is good to be here. L let's build three places, one for, for you, one for Moses, and for one for Elijah. Uh, here's the underside of that comment. Forget those other nine disciples who really cares about them. Forget all the other people down there. Let's just stay here. And I don't know about your life, but I could say in my life that there have been spiritual moments that I would call mountaintop experiences. Uh, sometimes it was on a retreat. Sometimes it was at a conference. Uh, sometimes it was simply reading God's word where, where God kind of spoke into life and it was like way up here. And the, the, the danger of only looking up here is that I think God only meets me in the mountaintop. And it turns out God meets me in the mundane as well. He meets us in everyday life. And so when Mark kind of wraps up the, the story here, he says this in verse 8. Suddenly when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. Jesus is the key to dwelling in God's forever home. Jesus is the one who brings us into a relationship. And Jesus will do that one day when we die and go to heaven. But here's the best part. Jesus does that right now. That Jesus is with you, the waters of baptism in this meal, as you spend time in his word, as you live everyday life. Sometimes we get frustrated in this world, and we wonder what he's up to, and when is he coming back again? And there's a reason for that. C.S. Lewis said this. He says that we have a desire to be in a place where we are recognized and loved, and he says this. That place exists. It's called heaven. And until we recognize as the place for which we were created, a place that no earthly locale will satisfy, we will be doomed to wander in fruitless searching for some pale counterfeit. Our real home can only be found where God is, the waters of baptism in this meal, in his word, and best of all, in your heart. That's where Jesus lives. It's his presence. You can look this way. You can look that way. You can look behind you. You can look in front of you. He is right beside you. He is with you. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci is known for painting a beautiful picture of the Last Supper. Historical, uh, loved by art critics. Uh, Michael Gelb uh, noticed it was done in a circular motif. I will admit I didn't notice that, but he pointed that out. The table's round. The bread and the plates are round. The disciples are arranged in a half circle on either side of Jesus. Then he makes this observation. Like a stone saw, tossed into the still pond of eternity, da Vinci conveys Christ's influence rippling out to change human destiny forever. You can look this way at da Vinci's picture. You can look that way at da Vinci's picture. You can look at it at this angle, that angle, that angle. And you'll see a circular motif. 
And here's the deal. If you don't see it like I didn't see it for so many years, it's still there. The same thing is true in life. You can look this way. You can look that way. You can look all over ways. He's still there with his goodness and love. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want you to live with that goodness and love forever. You can take a card. You can write the word forever on. I did fail handwriting. Uh, you can write that. You can put that in your bathroom mirror. You can put that somewhere special just, just as a reminder that he is with you. Not just when life ends, not just when you're in this place or you're watching online. But he is with you right now. When you get up in the morning, when you go through your day and the great moments and the not so great moments, he is with you. Always, always, always work in his goodness and love. And so when you get to the end of your day, ask yourself, where did I see God's goodness and love at work? What should I thank him for that he did this day? Where do I need to pray that that goodness and love will be work in me? Because our good shepherd, he comes with goodness and love. He comes and he guarantees it. He reveals his presence. It is there for you and for me to, to live out each moment. And when you see that God is present in every place, you recognize that every place is a sacred space where God is at work. Let's go to this good shepherd in prayer. Lord Jesus, our good shepherd, thank you for bringing God's goodness and love into our lives. Thank you for your forever presence. In these tough times, may we always trust you. May we always be assured of your goodness and love and what you so generously and abundantly provide, the gift of yourself. May we share with others all our days. In your name I pray. Amen. Awesome day it is again to, to just be together and, and praise our great God. We are so glad that you're with us. Uh, for those of you joining us online, if you could fill out the connection card on the bottom right-hand corner of our website, we would greatly appreciate it. 
For all of those of us on site, you have the opportunity to, to give an offering to God as you leave after communion. Uh, you can always, whether you're on site or online, give on our website at ChristLaMesa.org slash give. And as I always like to say, we don't give in order to get God's love. Uh, we give because we already have it. Uh, just one quick announcement for those of you who are on site. Uh, we have a service opportunity located over in the lower terrace. Uh, we ask that you would take four to five items with you. They're separated by zip code. It would be very helpful for us. If you wonder why I'm talking a little bit cryptically, it's because I don't, um, it's a surprise for all of those of you online. So there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> Before it even happened, you're welcome. Uh, but it's just a great way to, to continue to let um, all people know that we care about them. So we ask that you move over there afterwards and grab some, some treats to take with you and drop off today. Uh, as we continue with our worship, we go to God with our prayers as we lift up our hearts together. Gracious Father, from whom every fatherhood under heaven is named, support and bless every Christian home that husbands and wives would be devoted to one another and parents would pass on the faith to their children through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you alone establish all authority on earth. Bless those entrusted with this responsibility, both here and abroad, that they would serve with integrity and honor and for the well-being of all. Grant wisdom and guidance to Joseph, our president, Gavin, our governor, and Todd, our mayor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, graciously comfort and strengthen those who are sick, hospitalized, or enduring ongoing treatment, that they would know your peace and receive healing and relief. Be with those who are lonely, depressed, or struggling with mental illness. Surround them with those who know your redeeming love and will mercifully care for them. Grant faithfulness to all those who might be near death and comfort those who grieve in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, how lovely is the dwelling place of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who gives us sinners to eat and drink his flesh and blood here at the altar. Grant to all who come to this feast today, repent with believing hearts that in this sacrament they would receive forgiveness, life, and salvation, and be strengthened in faith toward you and love toward one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to receive communion today, again, you'll notice that things are just a tad bit different in the way we structure those words spoken by Jesus. Uh, this is not because uh, we believe in, in doing things the way we've always done them for the sake of, of that. It's because these words are taken from Scripture. They help us to prepare our hearts to, to focus narrowly on one thing, which is Jesus Christ. And as you'll hear in here, we are called to lift up our hearts. And I only know one way to do that, and that's to jump up. So I invite you to jump up and stay standing right now. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is good and right for us to praise you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. You brought us out of nothing into being, and when we had fallen away, you raised us up again. No matter how many times we've wandered, you've chased after us. For all these things, we thank you. And with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
our Lord Jesus Christ on the night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In a similar way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Hear your voice alone. 